Hello and welcome to your Astrological Vibrations for Monday, July 4th, 2022 by Gaia Blooming. I am Mimi and our energy mantra for today is, I keep aligning my feels with the feeling of expanded freedom. And we have reached Independence Day and that is what I encourage you, if you are in the States or even anywhere, to tune into the feeling of independence within yourself within your sovereign being. Um, that is what I will be focusing on this July 4th. Uh, I want to take a brief look at the astro for this week ahead. I also want to say thank you for the love. My face is back to normal. Thank you. <laughs> and I got hives after that and they went away. So all the good juju you sent me very much helped. So thank you for that. Um, for this week ahead, well, two big things are actually happening uh, late Monday, early Tuesday, and that is Mars and Mercury, both shifting signs. So Mars is moving into Taurus. Uh, Mercury is moving into Cancer. But that means for today, Monday the 4th, we are going to have Mars at 29 Aries and uh, Mercury hanging out at 29 Gemini. Hollow's popping his head up to say hi. So let him say hi. Uh, so that, we're going to dig into that. But those shifts definitely are very powerful shifts. I actually really like this combo of Mars in Taurus and Mercury in Cancer. It's very muddy. I've decided I like astrological mud. It grounds us. It may slow us down a little bit, but it's very cleansing. So Grateful for the incoming mud. <laughs> um, besides that, for this week ahead, we are going to have a connection between the sun and Chiron. That's going to be on Friday the 8th. And there's definitely two things that I want to look at just briefly with that because I think we're going to start feeling that energy coming in. Um, I always feel like there's positive use of the astro and then there's like, okay, this is what I need to be aware of. So with cancer energy, sun and cancer, we need to be very aware where we can become comfortable, where we can become almost stagnant or stuck in, uh, in a comfortable place. It may not actually, actually be healthy for us, but we're comfortable there. So with the sun and cancer squaring Chiron and Aries, Aries is about action. So Chiron and Aries might be like, hey, you got to shake yourself out of this comfortability that's keeping you stuck in toxicity or something that's no longer good for you or it's just time to move on from that energy so we have that engagement coming in it also can show up as flipping it around um needing to slow down and nurture and tend to some feelings and that chiron and aries that urge to be like nope Bye, zip, zip, zoom. Um, so be aware of that energy coming in. Be aware. Oh, that's why that's been playing in my head so much. The song, <laughs> you've got to know when to hold them and know when to fold them, know when to walk away and when to run. That has been playing in my head so much today. <laughs> and I'm like, where did that even come from? What is that there? This is about that. So you may feel that energy coming in and that's just something to be aware of because I feel like there's going to be a lot of healing in that. Um, nothing else too, too much to look at besides that. So let's dig into Monday's energy. Uh, we start off with some mud. I told you I'm a fan of mud. We have the sun in Cancer, moon in Virgo. They are connecting in the morning. Hopefully this will slow down that 29 degrees Mars and Aries energy, any reactive impulsiveness. This is not the Independence Day to be careless with firecrackers or anything like that, okay? With that Mars at 29 degrees, like practice, my sister used to say, it's better to be safe than sorry, you know, which could again, feed into that, <laughs> that sun and, um, sun and, uh, Chiron square coming in. I, card wise, it's interesting. I have these two, the fool 
and the guidance card in reverse. I think with this energy, especially with Gemini at 20 degrees, it's like, yeah, let's just do the thing, right? <laughs> we could find ourselves being very foolhardy and not necessarily listening to our guidance. So this is your, this is your reminder to listen to your higher guidance. Listen, if you have any pangs, if your intuition's like, hey, not a good idea. Listen to that in this energy. You don't need to be the fool and, you know, show everybody what that looks like, right? So um, what I like about the sun in Cancer, Moon, and Virgo is that, again, it can be slow. It can be conscientious. Um, it can also worry. This is not a call to get worried or anything like that. Just be listening to your intuition and be noticing what do you need to do for yourself as a sovereign being <laughs> to focus on expanded independence within yourself. What does that look like in your life? And just see where you can align with that. We then have the moon uh, squaring Venus. We have Venus <laughs> Gemini. Uh, still, still in the morning, you actually may not necessarily, you might feel more hermity actually in the morning than like, hooray, it's a day for a celebration. Um, so <laughs> enjoy your hermitum if you are feeling that. Again, to honor yourself rather than feel any pressure by a so-called holiday, you know, and rather celebrate what is true for you. Uh, moon then connecting to Uranus. So that's not going to be until the afternoon. We make a big jump. It's kind of just quiet, you know, and that's nice. Moon trining Uranus. Here come the triggers, right? Even though this is a trine, which is a favorable connection. Anytime we have Uranus, we can find ourselves being poked at, being triggered. Um, so just be very aware because again, with Mars at 29, Mars at 29 is ready to throw the elbows. It's ready to throw some punches. It's ready to fight for whatever it needs to fight for. And then Mercury at 29 Gemini is probably going to be just spouting things off at the mouth. And so that might even be what the trigger is about. You know, somebody coming up, spouting things, blah, 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 and blah, and you're like, ah, I take that personally. I feel that. So be aware of that. So Mars at 29, I don't know if I've addressed this enough, the 29th degree of any sign, it is the final degree of any sign, it has intensity to it. So there's also intense lessons around it. Aries energy is about being true to your I am energy. And with Mars there, it's aligning your actions with what is true for you. I love that I have the ordinariness card today. And I feel like just even finding that alignment could be so healing in today's energy. Getting past the conditioning, getting past the shoulds, what anybody in the world thinks that you should be doing, what is true for you. So Mars at 29 degrees Aries is beautiful for that. Um, <laughs> Mercury at 29, Gemini may have lots of ideas of what that actually looks like and may have taken in many ideas of how you should be celebrating this day, right? <laughs> so be aware of all of those ideas in your head with that energy because that is definitely going to be, have some intensity to it, like I said. Um, and check yourself as well. I always love, what is it, the four gates? Is it kind? Is it true? Is it necessary? I know those are three gates. Maybe it's the three gates. Is it kind? Is it true? Is it necessary? I like to add, is this something that's being called for to be shared at this time? Is this something that I'm being called to say at this time? Because I learned <laughs> that even though you know things, it's not always, or think you know things, it's not always, think, think you know things is actually way better to say. Because we all think we know so much, but what do we really know? We know like this much in an infinite universe. So um, <laughs> even if you think that you know something, it's not necessarily always a call to be shared. So keeping that awareness, I think, is always beautiful. Now, like I said, Mars and Mercury are going to be shifting in the 11 o'clock hour Pacific time, PM. So I'm going to put those in tomorrow's scope. Um, but be aware that your energy may start declining as well as those energies come in and listen to yourself as a sovereign being 
What do you need? Uh, how do you need to show up? The final card that I have that I have not shown yet is the healing card. And I love this. Um, the King of Cups. So even through all of this potential turmoil in these astro energies, there is healing for us, especially as we are aware of our feelings coming up and coming through. So keep your awareness, sun and cancer, on that energy. I will also say that we do shift into our evolution revolution day later in the evening. And that is, again, very triggery. So it may start off like a very pleasant chill day and kind of devolve through it. So just keep that awareness and keep listening to your intuition, how you are being called to show up. So that is it for today. You can book a reading with me. Email me, mimiclark at gmail.com. Besides that, the better it gets, the better it gets. There's more than enough love in the world for you. You have the power and honor your values. Namaste.